인사도 드리 못하고 지금 영화를 뵙습니다. Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke. And I'm Sabrina. And today is day two of our Turkish street food series. We are in the city of Bursa, the first capital of the Ottoman Empire. But if you didn't check out yesterday's episode, we were in Izmir, the third largest city here in Turkey, where we took you to the historical Kemralti Bazaar. Beef, lamb, mix, test. Oh, so this is a lamb beef mix. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try. Bye. Very nice. Oh, really nice. Today we're going to be taking you all around the city of Bursa on an ultimate street food tour here, visiting the market, the most famous sites, and the best Bursa street food. So let's just go and get started. Our first stop today here in Bursa is at this really famous breakfast joint. This place is called Abdul Simit Rini and they serve all kinds of different Turkish pastries. So I've got their classic, which is the Simit. Basically like the most popular street food you will see here in Turkey. It's sort of like the Turkish version of a bagel, but honestly it has more of a texture of like a pretzel and you can see it's just completely coated in sesame seeds. They are cooking them fresh in a wood fire oven and we are sitting on the street side with a nice little little bit of chai so let's give this a try here mm. oh man wow so many sesame seeds so it's a very dense bread like I said almost like a pretzel but it's also got this very strong flavor of sesame seeds the sesame seeds go all the way around completely coated and you can definitely taste that smoky wood fire oven this is a very typical thing that uh, the regular Turkish person is going to have for breakfast and you can't have it without a little bit of Turkish chai tea oh man really good way to start the day this place is really interesting. They have a little takeout window. You just line up, get what you need, and then sit down and order up a tea. But right here, I have a tahini pide. So a nice thick dough around and covered in this tahini sauce, which is made up of sesame paste. And it's been sweetened and it's really thick. So I'm really excited to try this. It looks delicious. Mm. Oh, wow. That's about as thick as a donut, and that sesame paste, the tahini sauce, has been sweetened. And oh my goodness, it tastes delicious. It's very nutty, almost like a peanut butter on top. Our third and final Turkish pastry for breakfast today is this, and this is called Uzumlu Kek, and it's actually stuffed with cheese, and the owners here were really friendly. They gave us this one uh, just for a free sample. Oh yeah, and you can see there's almost like a, it almost looks like a cottage cheese inside. So let's try that out. Mm, that definitely has a different texture than the simit and the pide tahini. It really is like crumbly and soft and then that cheese on the inside is very savory. It's really nice. This bakery is awesome. It had just really popular with the locals. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was a really delicious Turkish style pastry breakfast. This city of Bursa is very cool, right at the foothills of Mount Uluda, and it's just a ferry ride away from Istanbul, so very easy to get to, very historical, and lots of good food. So we're heading now to the market.
So this market is so cool. I love going to markets and this market has to be one of my favorite in the entire world. There's so much diversity of vegetables and fruit. There is honey, there is nuts, dried fruits, dried vegetables, all kinds of herbs and spices. Really everything is here and all the vendors are very, very friendly. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, a normal VI. Just like it's this. Private, yeah. Oh jeez. So we've got some honey here. I'm gonna try it out. It's kind of falling off the spoon. <laughs> oh wow. Oh. That is absolutely delicious. Chestnut. Do you know chestnut honey? Chestnut honey? Uh, yes, yes. Chestnut honey. Okay. Let's try this one. Oh. It's more. Oh, it's a lot different. Wow. I can't believe how different it is. It's actually got a little bit of a sourness to it. Oh, wow. It's good. That's so good. It's benefit uh, asthma. Good for, for asthma. asthma. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What do so, you get? Some cherries. They're fresh right on the side of the street. There's tons of them here, and I think they must be in season. Yeah, definitely in season. So, I'm going to try it out. I think we're going to buy some. Oh, man. So good. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm gonna try uh, an olive here. It's like a red olive. I don't know if I've ever had one that looks so dark in color, like red like that, but let's give it a try. Mm. Oh, it's very meaty. It's a big olive. A little bit sour and a little bit salty. Oh, that's pretty good. So we found something really interesting that we never saw before. This is actually a mulberry, but it's called a honey mulberry. And you can see it's all white instead of like a deep dark purple. So uh, interested to see what this is gonna taste like. And they're everywhere here at the mm -hmm. market. Mm. Very light, very, very, very sweet. Just very tasty, delicious. Lots of delicious samples here at the market too, lots of just everyone's so friendly, they'll let you try it. Really good. So our next stop is a shop that is directly inside of this market. It's kind of hidden away and they're serving something called Kantik. <laughs> we are sitting down now at Kardesler Gentik. The owners and the workers here are extremely friendly. They just gave us the full demonstration on how to prepare the Gentik. So we saw them uh, putting it in the oven downstairs and then we saw them preparing the meat and the mixture that goes on top of the bread upstairs. And what that is is basically cubed beef that has been mixed with um, tomatoes, a little bit of thyme, some salt, and I think onions as well. So we've got ours here. It looks really good. It's kind of like a mini pide that has been stuffed full of all of that uh, minced uh, spiced beef. And then on the side, we've got the classic Turkish drink, Iran, which is like a sort of like a savory, salty-ish yogurt drink. It's very interesting. I haven't had it in a long time, but this looks really good. I'm ready to dig in. Okay, let me rip a piece of the Gentik off. Make sure I get lots of that filling and this just smells so good and it's nice and fresh. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. That is awesome. Such an amazing texture of that bread. It's very doughy. There's a lot of elasticity to it, but then it's all about that meat mixture that's in the middle. A little bit of a tart sourness from the tomato. Very um, like beefy and then very oily and then rich in those spices that they put in, which is mainly just that thyme. It gives it sort of like a fresh herbal, sort of floral kick to it. And let's wash it down with a little bit of this iron. Oh yeah, that is just how I remember it. Very, very interesting. Sort of somewhere between sour and salty and very cold and refreshing. 
So we're finished off with our Gentic that was really good and you would never know that this place has this whole outdoor section where there's seating and uh, so friendly. Everyone here, just incredibly friendly. They've got the whole production going on down here. I'm going to do my best to give you guys the best direction for finding that place, but uh, it's definitely gonna be hard to explain it because it's really hidden in this market. But your best bet if you can't find it is just to ask some locals because it is quite packed out and uh, certainly everyone that works at one of these stalls in the market will know where that place is. One of my favorite things about Bursa is that it's a very compact city so you can easily walk and we just walked maybe two minutes from the market to Kozahan, which is the old silk market. It's in this big square structure, very uh, typical Ottoman architecture. It's the old silk market, so they used to sell silkworm cocoons here and uh, textiles, and nowadays it's kind of packed out with all these cafes. There's lots of little shops selling silk items, and then there's also a mosque in the middle. It's very beautiful here, very peaceful, with the birds uh, singing and all the trees. One of the most important and famous sites here in Bursa is this behind me, the Grand Mosque of Bursa. This place was built in 1399, so it's incredibly old. It's beautiful architecture, and it has 20 domes and two minarets, which is one of the unique features of this place. So it's definitely a must visit. We just finished off at the mosque. That is certainly a sight to behold right here in the center of Bursa. Massive mosque, very beautiful, and just the architecture of it is incredible. We are heading now to eat Bursa's most famous food, Iskender Kebab. This is the Iskender Kebab? Yes. Yeah. Special, Bursa special kebab. Bursa, spe Bursa yes. specialty? Yeah. Yes. We are at the Iskender Kebab restaurant and you can see right behind me here the big kebab on the uh, vertical spit rotating, cooking right on wood fire and he is just carving this thing like a samurai with his big long knife. Pretty cool. We are sitting down for Iskander Kebab, which is the ultimate Bursa food. But first I have to tell you about this restaurant. It is really cool. This place is called Kebab Shi Mamet Oglu Iskander Karalush. And it's been open since 1867, so over 150 years old. And they claim that this is the place that invented the Iskander Kebab. So Iskander is named after um, Iskander Effendi, who was the creator of this dish. So so they had a shop that was about 100 meters down the street from here, but then about uh, 60 years ago they had to move because it was starting to fall apart because it got too old. But other than that, everything has stayed the same. This is a fifth generation restaurant. They've got the donor kebab outside, cooking it up, slicing it up, and this just looks absolutely incredible.
incredible. You can see all that thinly sliced lamb meat on top. You can smell the lamb coming from this. Then they've poured a little bit of a tomato puree sauce on top. It's served with tomatoes and some peppers. And then on the side, we've got this like very thick yogurt cream. And then just when you thought things couldn't get better, they bring out bubbling hot sheep's butter to your table and pour it all over top of the Iskander kebab. And this is all sitting on top of a thin sort of bread that has soaked up all of those juices. It looks absolutely insane. And I just have to go in right away and try a piece of this. So let me grab some of this lamb and I gotta get a piece of bread underneath. You can see there, and I'll get some of this uh, yogurt and put it on top. And oh man, this just looks too good. I can't wait to try this. I can smell that butter. That is the perfect dish. There's no way that that can be healthy for you, but I don't care because that flavor is incredible. Such a rich lamb, deep lamb flavor with a little bit of sourness from that yogurt. It kind of cuts through the oiliness of that lamb with that sheep's butter all over top of it. And then of course the bread on the bottom has just soaked up everything together. Let's go in for one more bite. I'll cut a little piece of um, tomato uh, to go with my lamb here. Just check that out. This is absolutely beautiful. I honestly could not conceive a better idea for a dish than Iskander kebab. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Mm. So this restaurant's really cool and on your table you'll find a pamphlet of all their history here but we were also talking to uh, some of the owners here and they said that they were one of the first people to uh, make a donor kebab, the regular vertical spit that you see nowadays. Before they used to have just a lamb rotating the full lamb and uh, they decided that that wasn't going to work because some people got good cuts of meat and some people got bad, bad cuts of meat. So they changed it all, they changed the game and then they made this. So this just smells amazing and I'm gonna go in for a bite because my mouth is watering lots of yogurt on that one oh my god wow the amount of butter that is soaked into the bread on the bottom is enough to be good for this restaurant but the meat on top of it is extremely tender wow flavors are amazing. There are a ton of Iskander kebab restaurants, of course, in Bursa. It is the typical food of Bursa, but this place is seriously famous. There are a couple other places that are very famous, but this is Iskander himself. This is his restaurant from five generations ago, so you can't really argue with that. The interior of this place, too, is really cool. It's all wooden. They've got these stained glass windows, um, all these cool mosaic tiles, and really cool setting and really delicious food. Honestly, this is just like my favorite food. I can't even think of anything that I would like better. It's got all of the flavors that I like, all of the textures that I like, and it is seriously just to die for. Wow, that was amazing. Definitely did not disappoint. I could eat that every day, but I'm sure I would be a lot heavier than I am now. We are heading to the Tophane Clock Tower now. We have come to Tofane Tower. You can see behind me here, this is a clock tower right on the top of this hill. I thought it was pronounced Tofane, but we talked to the taxi driver and he told us that it's actually Tofane. And it's this beautiful area overlooking the city of Bursa and uh, really gorgeous architecture of the clock tower itself and really peaceful. Lots of people just relaxing and enjoying uh, the sunset. Well, about to be a sunset.
It is really, really beautiful up here. Amazing views over the city of Bursa. The clock tower itself is pretty cool, but honestly, I think the views uh, speak for themselves. This is definitely worth it to come up here when you visit Bursa. So that was a really cool visit to Tofane Clock Tower. We came here at sunset. It's uh, about 5 p.m. and it is gorgeous here at sunset. So I definitely recommend coming down at that time. You get beautiful views of the clock tower. So now that we're gonna head back to where we were earlier and get some tea to end the night. down to the area that we were in earlier. We're between the Grand Mosque and Kozahan behind us and we've come and sat down and got tea. You can get tea anywhere here in Turkey. Like we're just sitting out in the park. Very, very cheap. These are two lira each and it's just an amazing way to end the evening. Oh yeah. That's lovely. You can have your tea with sugar if you prefer. They do serve a couple of cubes of sugar alongside the tea. And this is like the ultimate people watching destination. You could just sit right on these tiny little wooden stools and check out all the people coming from the mosque, going around the markets. And it's just really nice way to end the day with some Turkish tea. Overall impression of Bursa. Did you enjoy our stay here? Yeah, Bursa is awesome. Actually, like I can't believe that this is hiding this close to Istanbul. It's uh, just a ferry ride away, or you can take a bus, and there's so much to see here. You don't need long though because it's all within walking distance. But there's so much food to eat and so much to see, and the people here are so friendly. Yes. Good tea too. And good tea. Addicting. <laughs> Very addicting. That's gonna be it for today's video. What an awesome day exploring Bursa. This is one of our favorite, new favorite cities, I would say. It's just beautiful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, all of the information for the spots we visited today will be down in the description box. So yes. if you guys come to Bursa, you can uh, check it out and find all these great spots. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in Istanbul. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.